Hi everybody and welcome to another Scratch tutorial, this time focusing on the creative tools in Scratch to deal with VR 360 media. This tutorial will be split up into three chapters. First will be editorial, second will be grading in a 360 environment and last but not least we'll be looking at how to composite things into 360 media. So let's start right away. Here I have a readily conformed timeline uh, of a VR project and in this case the source media does not provide the metadata to tell Scratch that it's actually 360 media. So in this case I'm going to do that manually by selecting all the shots with command A, going to the media browser and set the projection to Acre Rectangular. So by doing this we told Scratch, hey, this is 360 media actually. And it's quite important to do that because the tool set that you'll have in, in, the, in the player will depend on whether a clip is set to echo rectangular or normal. I'll show you in a second. So let's enter the player and go straight to the edit module to have a look at our timeline. And if you go to the effects tab here, we will find the new Pen360 controls. And this is actually part of the toolset that changes depending on the projection type of a shot. So if I swipe right and go to the Metadata tab and change the projection to Normal, you will see that we now have the regular offset and rotation controls. And if I switch it back to Acre Rectangular, we have the Pen360 controls. Now if we look at this shot, we'll see that the title is actually displayed in the back of the user. If I enter dual view and use the 360 mode on the dual view, we can see that we are not seeing the title here. I would need to use the pan and zoom tool to be able to look around and turn my head 180 degrees uh, to be able to see the title, which is not what I want. So let's flip this shot 180 degrees around and we can do that by just modifying the your parameter here. So twisting it and setting it to a straight 180 degrees we're now looking per default at the title. Now as the clip proceeds there's some camera movement going on and now we're looking kind of backwards in the opposite direction the camera is driving but actually we want to look in the same direction the camera is moving. So let's animate this parameter. Enable auto key and right here where the camera movement starts let's set a keyframe of 180 degrees and at the very end set another keyframe with 360 degrees. So now instead of turning to the right the camera turns to the left. Now you cannot only um, animate those parameters manually, if I exit dual view and go to a different clip, this one, uh, you could also use our tracker to stabilize a clip. In this example, if we display the grid, you can see that the white tent is moving around uh, in this shot pretty much. And actually we want the user to focus on this white tent and have it stick in one place. Preferably right in the center of our image to have it centered on the user's view here. To do so, let's go to the matrix, config menu, and there we see that the Pen360 controls are also available from this menu. Then from here we can enter the stabilizer. Now if it's only horizontal movement that you want to take out, the one point tracker is good to go. If you also want to compensate for roll or pitch, you would need to use the two-point tracker. So in this case, let's go with the one-point tracker, place it directly on the tent and start tracking. Cool, let's exit the tracker and have a look at the result. Yeah, indeed the tent is now perfectly sticking in one place 
and the your pitch and roll parameters are animated by the tracker to compensate for the movement. Now the only thing left to do is place the tent right in the middle of our crosshair here. So to do so I can use the your parameter and tweak it until the tent is right in the middle. And now hit the trim key button to shift the whole animation by that amount. So now as you can see our shot is perfectly stabilized and focused on the white tent. Now let's do some grading on 360 media. First thing you need to know about grading 360 media in Scratch is that as soon as you flag the shot as 360, Scratch will automatically adjust the way it implements effects like blur or sharpen. Because these effects are calculated using neighboring pixels, this would normally lead to a seam in the 360 projection. So for calculating a blur or sharpen effect on the far right side of the image, Scratch also uses the pixels on the left and vice versa. Now let's have a look at some other grading example. In this particular clip the sky is pretty grey, which is what we want to change and make it more blue. For that obviously let's create a layer and draw a shape around that area here, like so. Give it a little bit softness and now turn it more blue. Just like that. Okay, now as we scrub through our clip, we can see that uh, the sky actually leaves the image here on the right side and gets reintroduced on the left side. Now remember this is 360 media, which means it's being wrapped around us. And if we enter 360 mode and use the pan zoom tool to look around, we can see that now our grading is cut off right in the middle of the sky. And this is because if we enter dual view and look at the echo rectangular image here, our canvas actually is only on the right side and not on the left side. Hence, on this part of the sky, there's no grading present. To compensate for that, we can go to the canvas menu and enable the repeat 360 mode. And what this will do is simply reintroduce the canvas on the left side as it leaves on the right side and vice versa. So let's now animate our canvas over the duration of this shot. Therefore, enable auto key and position the shape here. Go to the beginning of the shot and scale it accordingly. Great, this seems to work pretty well. Let's enter 360 mode once more and take a look at our sky and that seems to work really good. Now finally let's do some compositing. On this shot there's a little lens flare going on which we want to enhance and for this we'll be using an OFX plugin from Genart's Sapphire collection. So let's create a layer, go to Shot, Insert and insert the Lens Flare plugin. Now a little bit of explanation. As you know 360 media is being projected on a sphere and we as the viewer are sitting right in the middle of that sphere looking around with our Oculus Rift or the Pan and Zoom tool. The reason the sphere projection looks good is because the flat version is in an equirectangular format which itself looks somewhat deformed, especially towards top and bottom, which are the poles in the 360 sphere. Now the exact opposite is currently happening with our lens flare layer. As it is not in an equirectangular format, it looks good in the flat view, but deformed in the 360 view. 
so there's three things to do now. First, make sure that nothing of our layer falls outside the flat image. If we would allow that, then when projecting the layer on the sphere, it would wrap around itself and create a seam, which we don't want, so let's scale this down a little bit. Next, position the lens flare in the middle of the layer because there we see the least amount of deformation when it gets transformed into the equirectangular format. Also, let me set the blend mode to screen to help the lens flare blend in much better. Lastly, add the so-called equirectangular plugin to our shot. This plugin does the actual transform of our layer into the equirectangular format, so now it will look correct when being projected on the sphere. This plugin also allows us to position the 2D element on the sphere. Now, to determine the uh, position of our plugin lens flare, we can use the pan zoom tool and our grid to look directly at the original lens flare here in the shot. So let's find a good place that gives us a clue as to where the lens flare is positioned. And this should be right about here now. And now we can use the uh, your pitch and roll parameters from the pan and zoom tool to fill it into the echo rectangular plugin. So let's fill in 8 in here and minus 21 here. Now you have two sets of controls on the echo rectangular plugin. The first one is the plane controls, which basically determines where the 2D plane is positioned in our 360 environment. And next to that, we have the position controls, which control where the image of the 2D plane is positioned on that plane. So right now, we position the plane right in the middle of our original lens flare, just the content of that plane is not yet uh, centered to that plane. So to make this happen, we use the offset X and Y uh, parameters here. And now our plug-in lens flare perfectly fits onto the original lens flare in the image. Now obviously we need to animate the opacity of our plug-in lens flare. So let me disable that for a second and find the frame where the lens flare disappears right here. So let's go to canvas, enable auto key and set the opacity to zero. We enable that layer again and step two frames forward and set the opacity back to 100 to display our plug-in lens flare. And as you can see, that animates pretty nicely. Now, if I enter dual view again and have a look at the flat echo rectangular image here, swipe to the right to bring up the source stack, I can have a look at my node tree. And here I have the lens flare plugin feeding into the echo rectangular plugin that positions it correctly in our 360 environment. And the echo rectangular plugin now again is being piped onto our shot on layer one. Now I can lock my view to always look at the top node at the shot itself and can select the lens flare, go to the shot menu to have the controls of my lens flare, and now um, use the parameters of the lens flare to uh, modify the same. So let me give that hotspot a slightly warmer color, like so. And also the color for the glare should be something more red, like so, and also bring up the intensity of both. Okay. At the same time I can always look at the 360 image with my dual view. And finally let's change the position of the glare like so. And that looks actually really nice. Let me exit dual view. Just take a look at the 360 view. That works really nice. 
In the same way we just comped in the lens flare, we could also comp in text elements using Scratch's own burn-in plugin or 2D elements into our 360 scene. If I pop up the note stack, you can see the texture element feeding directly into the burn-in plugin as a layer. The burn-in plugin containing our text elements, which then again is being fed into the Echo Rectangular plugin, which positions it correctly in our spherical environment. That then is put on layer 1 on our base shot. This concludes our tutorial about the creative VR tools in Scratch 8.5. I hope this was useful to you and see you next time. Bye!